So let's say we have this chemical reaction where A and B react forming C and D. How do we know if this reaction will occur at all? How do we know this reaction is spontaneous and will spontaneously occur, and if it's thermodynamically favorable, and again, will, will occur spontaneously? Well, when determining if any kind of process or chemical reaction will occur, there's one thing we need to know to determine whether this is spontaneous and will occur or not. We need to ask ourselves, when this reaction reacted, when this reaction happened, how did the entropy of the universe change? So this S term is the term for entropy. So we need to ask ourselves, how did the entropy of the universe change when this reaction occurred? And if the entropy of the universe increased when this reaction occurred, then we know it will occur spontaneously. However, if this reaction leads to the entropy of the universe decreasing, then this will not be spontaneous. And that's the only qualification, that's the only thing that's important when determining whether this reaction will occur spontaneously or not. So now you might wonder, when determining if this reaction will occur spontaneously, you need to determine if the entropy of the universe increased. So how do we determine if the entropy of the universe increased? Well, what makes up the universe? Well, there are two things that make up the universe. This system, this system, and the surroundings, and everything else in the universe. Those are the two things that make up the universe. So again, the system is comprised of the atoms, the atoms of this chemical reaction. Those atoms make up the system. And everything else in the universe the surroundings, everything else in the universe is, again, the surroundings, and it's those two things, this system and everything else in the universe, which make up the universe. So now, when determining if this reaction will occur spontaneously, we need to determine if the entropy of the universe increased. If the entropy of the universe increased when this reaction occurred, we know this will occur spontaneously. So to determine if the entropy of the universe increased, we need to know how the entropy of the surroundings changed, and we need to know how the entropy of the system changed. And if we know how those two entropies changed, we know how the entropy of the universe changed. So, for example, when this chemical reaction occurs, how do we know if the entropy of the system increased or decreased? How can we determine that? Well, the rule of thumb is, first of all, let's say we had this chemical reaction where two water molecules reacted, forming two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom. When this chemical reaction occurred, first we had two moles of compounds, but then we went through the chemical reaction. Now we have three moles, two of this guy, one of this guy, so three moles in total. So when this chemical reaction occurred, we ended up with more moles. And whenever a reaction occurs where now we have more moles, that's a reaction where the entropy of the system increased. So, so this reaction, the entropy of the system increased, which is favorable. Because again, that, that helps promote the universe increasing. So again, that's just a rule of thumb you need to be familiar with. Whenever we have a certain amount of moles, and then they react, now we have more moles. That means the entropy of the system increased. So the entropy of the system would increase. And another rule of thumb is whenever you have a solid turning into a liquid or a liquid turning into a gas, these both represent systems that have increased entropy. For example, maybe we have water melt or we have ice melting into water, the entropy of the system increased. Or maybe we have water evaporating into gas, the system of this, the, the entropy of this system increased. So again, so, so the, whenever when we're looking at a reaction, those are the two things you need to be familiar with, how, how the phases are changing and if there's more moles. And if the products have more moles, then we know the entropy of the system increased. However, maybe we had the opposite. Maybe we had four moles on this side and maybe we had two moles on this side. Then this situation, the entropy of the system decreased. We had fewer moles in our products. So in this system, the entropy decreased. So those are the so for determining how the entropy of the system changed, these are the things you need to be familiar with. However, how do we know the entropy of the surroundings increased? Because again, that's also important. So how do we know the entropy of the surroundings increased? Well, this is actually very simple. If we have an exothermic reaction, so this reaction reacts and it releases heat. It releases heat as a product, then this is an exothermic reaction, and therefore this heat that's released to the surroundings increases the entropy of the surroundings. So pretty straightforward. If, if the reaction is exothermic, then we know the entropy of the surroundings increased. So again, that's favorable, because if the entropy of the surroundings increased, that promotes the entropy of the universe increasing. And again, so pretty straightforward. And if we have an endothermic reaction, if this re re reaction required heat, and it took heat from the surroundings, then in this situation, the entropy of the surroundings decreased because it took that heat from the surroundings. So now the surroundings have less heat, so now the entropy of the surroundings 
decreased, which is unfavorable because that promotes the entropy of the universe decreasing. So those are the two terms you need to be familiar with, that how the entropy of the system changed and how the entropy of the surroundings changed. But realize you need to know both of them to know if the entropy of the universe changed or in increased or not. For example, maybe we had two moles on the reactants and maybe four moles on the products. So therefore, we know that entropy of the system increased. In this reaction, the entropy of the system increased. So does that mean the entropy of the universe increased and this reaction will occur spontaneously? Well, we also need to know how the, the entropy of the surroundings changed. For example, if this was an exothermic reaction that released heat, and therefore the entropy of the surroundings increased, then we know the entropy of the system increased, the entropy of the surroundings increased, so therefore the entropy of the universe must have increased. So therefore this reaction must have been spontaneous. However, maybe the entropy of the system increased, so we created more moles, but maybe this reaction was endothermic, maybe it required heat. So in this situation, the entropy of the surroundings decreased. So if this happens, how do we know if the entropy of the universe increased or not? We know the entropy of the system increased, but we know the entropy of the surroundings decreased. So how do we know overall how the entropy of the universe increased? Well, again, we need to know the magnitudes. We need to know the numerical magnitudes, and we can see which one is greater. Whichever one is greater has the biggest impact on the entropy of the universe. So let's do some examples to really clarify what's going on. So let's say we have this chemical reaction, where again, when with this chemical reaction, is this chemical reaction spontaneous? Does the entropy of the universe increase when this chemical reaction occurs? Well, first of all, let's see. We have 4 moles here, and we have 12 moles here. So we know we have more moles in our product, so therefore we know the entropy of the system increased. The entropy of the system increased. So we know that's favorable, but what about the entropy of the surroundings? Well, we know it released heat. It released heat, so therefore whenever the surroundings gain heat, they, they increase in entropy. So therefore, because this is exothermic, we know the entropy of the surroundings also increased. So therefore, we know this has to be spontaneous. The entropy of the universe had to increase. So therefore, we know this is a spontaneous reaction. This, this reaction will occur spontaneously. But let's say we had this chemical, or let's say we had another chemical reaction. So again, is this reaction spontaneous? Well, again, we went from 2 moles to 4 moles. So we, the system increased in the number of moles, so therefore the entropy of the system increased. The entropy of the system increased. But we know this is an endothermic reaction. It's, it required heat, so it took heat from the surroundings, so we know the entropy of the surroundings decreased. So now how do we know this reaction is spontaneous? Well, we need to know the magnitudes. We need to know which of these magnitudes was greater and which has the bigger impact on the entropy of the universe. But once we determine that, then we can determine how the entropy of the universe changed. And if, if overall this was greater than this, then we know the entropy of the universe increased. So therefore, we know this reaction is, therm is spontaneous and is thermodynamically favorable and will occur spontaneously. So again, when determining if this reaction will occur spontaneous, remember, all that matters is the entropy of the universe. If you can determine how the entropy of the universe changed, you can determine if this reaction is spontaneous. If this reaction occurred and the entropy of the universe increased, we know this reaction is spontaneous. So this is one way you can look at it. But there's another way you can look at this. Again, you can determine the entropy of the universe, how that increased, and if the entropy of the universe increases, we know the reaction is spontaneous. But another term that tells us the exact same information is this Gibbs free energy term. They essentially represent the exact same thing. They're identical. They're just different ways of looking at the exact same thing. And we know when the entropy of the universe increases, that's spontaneous. But with Gibbs free energy, when the Gibbs free energy decreases, that's spontaneous. So when looking at this reaction, if the entropy, if the Gibbs free energy decreased, we know that's spontaneous. But again, they tell us the exact same thing, and just based on the sign conventions that humankind has decided to use, negative delta G is spontaneous, but positive entropy is spontaneous. But again, they represent the exact same thing. And again, the entropy of the system can also be represented by this, delta S, which again represents the entropy of the system. So again, they represent the same thing. And again, remember, the entropy of the surroundings. How do we know the entropy of the surroundings changes or increases or decreases? Well, we know if it's an exothermic reaction, that the entropy of the surroundings increase. If it's an endothermic reaction, the entropy of the surroundings decrease. So therefore, we know the entropy of the surroundings is directly related to whether this reaction is exothermic or endothermic.
So that's another way, instead of focusing how the entropy of the surroundings change, we could just focus on if this reaction was endothermic or exothermic. And again, they tell us the exact same thing. They represent the exact same thing. So there are these two equations which essentially are parallel. They all mean the exact same thing, and they're telling us the exact same information. And just the convention that humankind has decided to use, we decided that, let's just say, that a negative delta G is spontaneous and represents an increased entropy. So therefore, we know negative delta G is spontaneous. So therefore, these terms, they, they, if they create a negative delta G, that's, that's thermodynamically favorable. And again, so that makes sense because we know an exothermic reaction has a negative delta H, which again, we said is spontaneous because a negative delta H promotes a negative delta G, which is spontaneous. So again, we said that if endothermic or exo, and again, if this reaction was endothermic, it required heat, that's a positive delta H. That's a positive delta H, which would promote a positive delta G, which is not spontaneous because we said a negative delta G is spontaneous. So again, these two terms tell us the exact same information. And again, we said if the entropy increased that spontaneous of the system, and again, because we have a negative sign here, so we know if the entropy of the system increased and became more positive, so this entropy of the system became more positive, because it's negative, that will create a negative delta G, which is spontaneous. And again, so, so that makes sense. So again, I know the sign conventions are confusing and it's a little arbitrary, but it's just something you need to be familiar with. But these terms essentially represent the exact same thing. And also the entropy of the system, you have to multiply by the temperature of the system. And the way I like to think about this is the entropy of the system, how big of an impact it has on the delta G determine, depends on the temperature. The higher the temperature, the bigger the impact the entropy of the system has on this delta G. So, so that's just something you need to be familiar with. But again, so let's do one last example. Let's say we had this chemical reaction. Is this reaction spontaneous? Well, again, we know if this reaction leads to the entropy of the universe increasing, we know this reaction is spontaneous. But another way you can look at it is determine if the delta G of this reaction is negative. If this reaction has a negative delta G, we know that's spontaneous. So how do we determine the delta G of this reaction? Well, again, if we know the enthalpy of this reaction, that's one thing. So again, we said this reaction released heat. This reaction released heat, so therefore it's exothermic, so therefore it has a negative delta H. So this would have a negative delta H. So again, that's, that's favorable because that promotes a negative delta G. So that, that promotes spontaneity. And again, we, saw, we also saw we had 4 moles to went to 12 moles. So we know the entropy of the system increased. So the entropy of the system increased. It became more positive. And because it's negative, a minusing a very positive value also is favorable because that also leads to negative delta G. So because this was exothermic with a negative delta H, and this was the entropy of the system increase with the positive entropy increase of the system, we know both of these promote a negative delta G. So this is spontaneous. This has a negative delta G, so therefore this reaction is spontaneous. So this is the second law of thermodynamics. And the second law of thermodynamics is that the entropy of the universe always increases. So therefore, we know if this reaction occurs spontaneously, we, we know if the entropy of the, in, of the universe increased when this reaction occurred, we know that will occur spontaneously because of the second law of thermodynamics.